Hello Wacom family and welcome to a new tutorial on how to draw eyes. The very first attempt at painting eyes I think always look like two dots. A few tries later the eyes maybe become two circles with dots in the middle. Now let's give the eyes some upper eyelids. That's the easiest way to add emotions to your faces like angry or evil eyes, sad eyes, or maybe a bit bored ones. So as you see, it's pretty easy to draw eyes using this abstract comic style, but let's go a bit deeper into the topic and let's see what else we can do with eyes. As we know, the eye is a ping pong ball sized sphere sitting inside the head. So let's get started by drawing this sphere. By giving the sphere horizontal and vertical axis, we show that it is a three-dimensional object. When you draw in the two axes, make sure that they are ellipses that end at exactly half the height and half the width of the circle. Viewed from the front, the iris is about half the size of the whole eyeball. The size of the pupil varies from person to person and it also depends on the light situation and on the mood. In addition, the iris is not painted flat onto the eyeball, rather it is raised a bit like a contact lens would be. The farther the iris turned, the more prominent this iris bump becomes. The pupil is centered behind the iris lens instead of on top of it. That's why when an eye looks to the side, you'll move the pupil a little bit towards the center of the eye. Now the edges of our eyelids are shaped like two flattened U's but let's look a bit more closely at the two U's. To find the line more easily, let's divide the upper eyelid into three sections. And for the lower eyelid, let's use two divisions. At the middle section of the eye, you'll see what I think is called the tear duct. This varies from face to face and sometimes it isn't even there at all. Now that we have pre-sketched the eye shape, we can either round off the corners of the subdivision lines a bit or try drawing the two eyelid lines into clean sweeps. This five line concept offers a wealth of possible variations. Depending on the length ratio and angle of the lines, you can create very different types of eyes expressing a wide range of moods. Next, we should keep in mind that the two eyelids have a certain thickness too. Therefore, a narrow edge should be visible at the way around, almost parallel to our five lines from before. If you want to draw a crying eye at some point, you might be interested to know that the tears collect down right here. The eyes, including the eyelids, can be constructed from every conceivable perspective in this way. Start with the sphere and imagine the eyelids wrapping around the sphere. Use the five lines to work out your basic shape you will need to adjust the length or the angles depending on perspective. In some perspectives you may only need two or three of the lines because the others are hidden behind the eyeball itself, for example in profile, at which points does the narrow area of the eyelids become visible, which of the lines do you want to emphasize, which can be ignored. We will get into this in more detail as we position the eyes on the face. Now let's try to fit them into different head shapes. In order to define the eye area, I like to start 
with this small almost triangle shaped area above the nose ending up at your old guidelines. As you can see the triangle shortens when the head is looking down and lengthens when looking up. In profile the triangle seen from the side simply becomes a line. Next and very simplified we want to define the shape of the bones around the eye because they are very important. They protect our eyes from blows and soccer balls. The easiest way to define the bones around the eye is to use the, uh, I call it, Batman mask. Our triangle serves as a starting point here. Just like our eyelid construction, the Batman mask consists of three lines at the top and two at the bottom. Each of the outer edges meets the cut out areas of our head shape. When you transfer the Batman mask onto the tilted heads, notice what happens to the angles and which line appear shortened. In profile we can see only a part of the mask, of course. There is no general rule about how far apart the two eyeballs have to be. But if you're not sure, just think of a third sphere, or a little more, between the two eyeballs. This will give you a good distance. The eyeballs are obviously not glued onto the front of the face. Instead, they are located quite deep inside our head. Therefore, in placing our spheres into the Batman mask, we have to offset them a bit. How big the offset depends on the perspective. You can see this particularly clearly with the head tilted up. In profile, we see this very easily from the front the depth of the eyeballs isn't visible at first. Never underestimate the importance of what we learned earlier about the pupil and iris. Even a tiny bulge in the iris can enhance the realism of your eyes. From the front of course you don't need to embellish. But as soon as the eye is not looking straight at the viewer Remember to curve the iris and deepen the pupil. Now let's get to the eyelids. First mark each of the two outer edges of your eyes level with the head shape guidelines. Then draw in the pentagon. If you have already constructed the spheres neatly, everything else almost draws itself. Here again pay attention to the angles and length on the sides depending on how you're viewing the head shape. When the views are pushed to extremes the pentagon might also form interior angles. In profile the iris covers half of the pentagon. The second eyelid line is an important way to emphasize the perspective you decided to depict the face from. Pay close attention to which parts of the narrow eyelid surfaces are facing the viewer. They will be thicker than the others. With the head looking up only the upper eyelid surface is visible. With the head turned to the side the eyelids are no more symmetrical and different areas of the eyelid surfaces become visible around each of the eyes. As you see, drawing eyes can tax your three-dimensional imagination pretty hard sometimes, but it's worth it. The two eyelid creases are the boundary between the eyelid and the face. For them you can use the sphere as a guide. It's also worth holding on the pentagon subdivisions from the eyelid design 
at this point. If you don't want your face to look old or tired, draw the lower eyelid crease a little softer and shorter than the upper one. You can even hint at it just slightly. Eyebrows tend to express the mood of your face very clearly. In a neutral resting state, the eyebrow starts at the top of the triangle, rises slightly and then tapers down again. The edge of the eyebrow is again at the cut out area from the head shape design. It's best to define the shape of the eyebrows with outlines first. This will simplify later steps. You can also indicate the direction of hair growth with small lines within the brow shapes. Start in the middle with deep lines and flatten them out closer to the edges. From this point on you have a ton of opportunities to develop your image. But since we are not talking about different styles or coloring in this tutorial, let's develop our eyes using entirely clean lines. As you can see here, the two upper eyelid lines can also be combined into a single thick line. This is especially true if you want to create a shadow here. For the lower eyelid, it's a good idea to use the outlines a bit more sparingly because usually shadows do not occur here when the light source is from above. For iris and pupil I'm going to give you a simple but effective solution when using a graphic tablet. Reduce the opacity of your brush about 30% in order to paint the iris. Next let's give the iris a little sparkle by reducing the brush size and hardness to lighten the center of the iris with white. Now you can fill the pupil in black. Now you can use white again to set a light reflection point. It doesn't always have to be a dot. You can experiment with different shapes. To add a final touch to the iris, show the shadow. The upper lid casts on the iris. And if you like, you can also throw in a little more detail to the structure of the iris by drawing preferably on a separate layer, subtly alternating black and white lines from the pupil to the edge of the iris. But just a little tip, only make this effort if the eyes you are drawing are actually big enough to be able to notice this level of detail. Eyebrows can follow quite easily from these filled shapes using a graphic tablet again. First use the smudge tool to soften the edges of the shapes and deform them into that kind of a hairy zigzag shape. Be careful to always follow the hair direction with the smudging but not to make the zigzag either too even or too messy. When you're satisfied with the result, lighten your zigzag a bit and finish off the brows with some hair. Draw the individual hair with uh, as quick strokes as possible. It's best to use slightly curved lines that taper off and change direction often while still paying attention to the direction of hair growth in the eyebrows. The eyelashes grow on the second or outer eyelid line. They tend to be longer towards the outer edge of the eye. The lower lashes are shorter than the upper ones and towards the middle they usually become quite fine, almost invisible. In addition eyelashes are always curved and the direction of these curves forces your three-dimensional imagination again. But if you're not sure where the eyelashes have to point, always let them 
start from somewhere at the midpoint of your eyeball sphere, then you are on the right way. When drawing eyelashes it can be helpful to use a two-step process. First, draw in only about 10 lashes per eyelid. Take special care that all of these eyelashes bend at the correct angle and pay attention to the length and allow them to taper just like the eyebrow hairs. In the second step use the spaces between the initial lashes to insert the chaos lashes. Vary the length and direction of curves slightly like with the eyebrows before. Occasionally let several lashes come together to make little clumps. Depending on how you turn your head, the direction of the lashes will change too. This may require a brief moment of spatial reflection. Take your time, think carefully about where the eyelashes need to point. This brings us to the end of a challenging tutorial. You needn't internalize and apply everything we have done here immediately. But you find pretty much every tip that you will need to draw eyes in this tutorial. You will no doubt pick up one or two. So have fun drawing and see you soon. <clears throat> Spoiler alert! Some of the eyes we so painstakingly just constructed will simply disappear behind the nose in the next tutorial.